Hey friends, Joe here at Reverb, and today we're gonna to talk about some signature vintage guitars. Now, some of the most famous household name guitar players, of course, have their own signature model. Chet Atkins, Buddy Guy, Carlos Santana, and even more players like St. Vincent, John Mayer, Dave Grohl, and many others. Now, we're all familiar with these players and maybe their signature guitars as well. But some classic signature models have become almost more famous in the modern age than the players themselves. So today, let's talk about the players behind six classic vintage signature guitars. First, let's talk about Joe Pass. One of the more well-known guitar players on our list today, Joe Pass is known for his beautiful solo guitar work, as well as recording with icons Ella Fitzgerald, Duke Ellington, Dizzy Gillespie, and many more. In much of his career, he seemed to favor his Gibson ES-175, which he received as a gift upon leaving drug rehab in the early 60s. You can hear it on beautiful chord melodies on the esteemed record Virtuoso, as well as For Django 10 years earlier. In the 1970s, Joe had a custom Dequisto single pickup guitar built for him. Then, the Ibanez Joe Pass JP20 was in production from 1981 to 1990. Intention was to create an affordable arch top. It was slightly based off of Pass's Dequisto, and he used it live and in the studio through the 80s. And there was yet another Joe Pass signature model, this time from Epiphone. In 1994, the Epiphone Joe Pass Emperor II. But by this time, Pass had circled back to the Gibson ES-175. But this time, a custom-built one for him, with the pickup right up adjacent to the fingerboard. Next up, Mary Kay, otherwise known as the First Lady of Rock and Roll an early influential guitar player that helped define the Vegas lounge music scene. And her signature guitar has an interesting story, and it starts with a photo from 1956. Mary Kay and her trio bandmates were part of a Fender ad promo. In the photo, Kay is holding the guitar that she would soon be associated with forever. The guitar, which did not belong to her at the time, was the first custom Fender Stratocaster ever produced, and the first model Fender issued in this color scheme a distinctive ash blonde body with gold hardware. Now, before and after this photo, Kay used D'Angelico guitars, but the image of Mary Kay with this Strat became popular in ads all around the world, as well as in the film Cha 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 Boom. It wasn't until 2005 that Fender issued the limited signature Mary Kay tribute Stratocaster. Then two years later, after Kay passed away, they issued a special reissue 1957 Mary Kay commemorative Stratocaster, made to original 1957 specs. Okay, next on our list is the wonderful Barney Kessel, a prominent American jazz guitarist who recorded with jazz greats Charlie Parker and Sonny Rollins and pop groups Beach Boys and the Monkees. Barney was an early member of the all-star studio session group, The Wrecking Crew. In 1957, Chicago's K Company launched a line of guitars bearing Barney Kessel's signature. These guitars had a short run, being discontinued in 1960. But then, in 61, Gibson launched the Barney Kessel signature in two different models, the Barney Kessel Custom and the Barney Kessel Regular. These beautiful double Florentine cutaway models were in production until 1974. This move by Gibson made sense, considering Kessel seemed to have been a Gibson fan. The main guitar he used early in his career was a 1946 or 47 ES350. Did you know that the person who wrote Walk Don't Run, which the Ventures then turned into a surf hit, was jazz guitarist Johnny Smith? Johnny Smith was an incredibly diverse guitar player. He could hang with the best jazz players at Birdland and could also sight read his way through orchestral arrangements at the New York Philharmonic. He recorded with Stan Getz in the critically acclaimed Moonlight in Vermont. Johnny Smith has self-designed signature guitars with Guild, Gibson, and Heritage. First was Guild, 
with the Johnny Smith Award, issued in 1955. Then, in 1961, Gibson president Ted McCarty, in an effort to expand the production of their hollow-body electric guitars with influential players, spent some time with Smith, and Smith then designed the guitar he wanted. Gibson put it into production shortly after. With two signature guitars in Johnny Smith's name, there would soon be opportunity for a third. When the Gibson factory moved from Kalamazoo, Michigan to Nashville in 1984, some of the builders stayed in Kalamazoo to form Heritage Guitars and together they designed the Heritage Johnny Smith, a model that was introduced in 1989. Then, in 2004, Johnny returned his endorsement to Guild, knowing that master luthier Bob Benedetto would be supervising the construction. The Guild Johnny Smith Award by Benedetto was available for the next couple of years. Okay, let's move on. One of the most distinguished American jazz guitar players, performers, singers, songwriters, George Benson, is next on our list. Benson is a prime example of an artist who has been able to successfully cross over from playing jazz to R&B to pop. He has recorded with the likes of Miles Davis, Freddie Hubbard, Stevie Wonder, and he is known for his entertainment sensibilities as well as raw talent. He's a star. Benson has always gravitated towards full hollow body F-hole electrics, and in 1977, Ibanez released their very first full hollow body artist signature guitar in Benson's name, the GB10. It is also the longest running model in the company's history. Several other models in this line have been released since, including the GB15, GB20, GB100, and GB200. And even as recently as 2012, another model, the LBG300, was released. It seems that the partnership between Benson and Ibanez is still very passionate about building for the modern player. The last on our list today is Mexican-American guitarist from Dallas, Texas, Trinidad Trini Lopez. His first album featured a wonderful, powerful version of If I Had a Hammer. Trini was seen in the early 60s playing a Barney Kessel Custom, the one previously mentioned in this video and Gibson, having issued a few signature models for jazz players like Kessel and Johnny Smith, was now turning towards this young Latino artist who was approaching pop stardom. As Lopez was digging the Kessel model, he wanted to simply add a few features to customize to his style. This model, with the double cutaway Florentine horns, would become the Trini Lopez Deluxe. He also inspired a more rock model design, based on an ES-335, which would become the Trini Lopez Standard. This was the first time in history that an artist had two very contrasting guitar models with their signature on both. This paved the way for other artists to have this opportunity down the line, including Les Paul, B.B. King, Chet Adkins. Trini Lopez was super influential in this way, and not to mention the obvious influence he had on the Dave Grohl signature. All of these signature guitars have stories, as do the players behind them. Instruments of all stylings speak to us in different ways, not only tonally, but in terms of their look and their aesthetic. That image of Mary Kay with that Strat could have just as profound an impact on somebody as that tone of Joe Pass's JP20 on a solo. Inspiration comes in so many different forms, and there's no slowing that down. What are some of your favorite signature guitar models? Let us know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.